Question 1A suggests one reason why a trial balance must always be in balance. And the answer is one reason why a trial balance must balance is because of the dual aspect concept, which states for every debit entry, there's always a credit entry. So if we have debit of, we enter debit 200, there must be a credit entry 200 and vice versa. If there's a credit entry of 200, there must be a debit entry of 200. And so therefore, trial balance must always balance. So that's part one. Part two, identify two errors that are not revealed in a trial balance. And this comes from when we look at the under control system section of the syllabus, you'll see there are different errors uh, that a trial balance may have. And some errors you will be able to pick up because let's say if you enter 200 on the debit side and you enter 100 on the credit side, we have the error and you'll be able to see it. But the errors could be in such a way that you would not be able to see and let's go through them and understand. All right, so the ask for two, but here are the student how we regularly just give students a value. So therefore they ask for two, but we'll give you all four and you all could pick whichever two from these. So we must identify the two errors that are not revealed by the trial balance. And in order to do that, we have four listed here. I'll go through each of the four. Uh, so you have an understanding of how a trial balance can balance, but the errors are not seen. So the first one we have is the error of commission. So this is where the information is entered in the wrong account, but in the correct type of particular ledger. So let's use an example. So for example, a business sold goods to Mark Anthony for $200. And so therefore we know that if we sell goods to him and we sell it on credit, it will be we'll debit Mark Anthony account for 200. However, instead of entering it into Mark Anthony with a C, because that is the Mark Anthony who we would have sold the goods to, we entered it into Mark Anthony with a key. And so therefore that is an error that occurred. And such an error is considered a error of commission. Two, error of omission. This is where you just totally do not enter the information. If the information is not entered, it, the trial balance will balance, but the information within the trial balance will not be accurate because it will have insufficient info. Then we have the error of principle. So this is another form of entering information into a wrong account, but also now this is in a different type of ledger. So for example, if we have motor vehicle, we have gas for motor vehicle expense, $300 and instead of accounting for it in the motor vehicle expense account we account for it in the motor vehicle account see those are two different types those will go into those are two different types of ledgers we have one is an expense account and the other one is an asset account so because of that this is called an error of principle following we have the error of original entry so this is where the wrong information the wrong number is entered so instead of entering 768 yeah you enter 786 both in the debit and credit side and so therefore again you try balance with balance but the information is wrong so therefore though that is an error as well so that is question one up to part two question one b the following balances were taken from the books of Henry's Pizza at the beginning and end of 2019. So we have here the account title and we're looking at the different information. We have bank, cash, the machinery, account receivable, a loan, equipment, accounts payable, and inventory. And we have it first in january 2019 and then after we have it at the 31st of december 2019 so at the beginning of 2019 and the end of 2019 let's see what what question they may have required using information given on page four answer the following questions calculate capital 
on January 2019 and December 2019. All right. Well, let's look at the information. So what we've seen here is, um, I don't know if you all noticed, but there are a list. Within the list, we have assets. We have liabilities. And how accounting works, those who remember the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus capital. So in order to find capital, that will mean we have assets minus liabilities will equal to capital. So you have to do assets minus liabilities for January, assets minus liabilities in December in order to find what capital may be. So let's list out assets, list out liabilities in order to find capital. So bank assets, cash is an asset, machinery asset, current account receivable asset, loan liability, equipment is an asset, accounts payable is a liability, and inventory is an asset. So let's go across now to the table equivalent to, to like how they did it in the exam and let's go to that in order to calculate what capital may, will be so I, i'm just going to list out the totals for january on the left side the totals for december on your right side and we'll get to see how much capital is all right so you're seeing it here where the assets on january the first 2019 equal 54 thousand and fifty we have our two liabilities loans and accounts payable adding up to seven thousand and twenty five and we do the same calculation for december and we get that our assets are up to forty four thousand nine hundred our liabilities add up to four thousand three hundred and fifty so our capital for January 1st, 2019 is equal to 47,025 and our capital on the 31st of December, 2019 is equal to 40,550. Part 2. What was the net profit or net loss for the year? In order to calculate net profit or net loss, Okay, so in order to calculate the net profit or loss, we have to take the closing capital amount and minus it from the opening capital amount. We know that our closing capital, based on the information, is in the 31st of December 2019, what the capital amount was at the end of the year. Our opening capital is how much capital we had at the start of the year, which is the 1st of January, which have the 31st of December and the 1st of January. So which equals to, we had, the will assign 40,000. So we had our closing capital of 40,550 minus from our opening capital, 47,025. So we have a negative number of 6,475, which means we have a net loss of 6,475. Part two. What was the total value of non-current assets at the end of the year? So in order to calculate that, we must go and see, first of all, which are our non-current assets. And then after we see, we add up what is the value of the non-current non assets in order to calculate this. So our non-current assets, I will highlight them in blue. They include equipment, and machinery all the other assets those are current assets so the amounts we have to add are twenty three thousand three hundred and ten thousand six hundred let's see how much this adds up to all right so total non-current assets at year end equal to the machinery amount at the end of the year the equipment amount end of the year and we add it up to a beautiful total of thirty three thousand nine hundred Let's move on to part four. How would inventory at the 31st of December 2019 be classified on the statement of financial position? So we see in 
the inventory at the 70 31st 2019 so this is our closing inventory part five which item is a current liability so they say is a current liability and we have between two choices and i will do these in red i like them in red we have between the loan and accounts payable it could be a a loan could be a long-term loan which is a non-current liability or it could be a short-term loan which is a current liability and then after we have accounts payable which is always a current liability and so therefore because it said a and you need to choose one we will go with i will erase the one that we will not go with we will not go with loan we will go with the current the accounts payable so our answer accounts payable yes let's move on part six calculate the working capital at the start of the year so in order to calculate working capital the calculation is all right so just note we were asked we were asked to calculate working capital at the start of the year so therefore this information that we have here is the current assets minus the current liabilities from january the 1st 2019 so we list out our current assets here which include inventory account receivable bank and cash all listed from january from january 1st 2019 then we get our accounts payable from january 1st 2019 minus it from the total and we get fourteen thousand eight hundred and seventy five as our working capital and will we get three marks for this yes we will so let us continue forward from here part seven in the table in the table in b on page four account titles one two and eight are current assets list the name of current assets in order of liquidity um so in order to list it in liquidity you must know firstly what is liquidity so liquidity is how easily a non a asset could be turned into cash and the easiest asset that could be turned into cash is cash so the most liquid asset is cash followed by we have bank after bank we have our debtors which is our current liabilities and then after we have inventory so let's go to the information and see it is one two and eight so we're looking at one two and eight which is cash bank and inventory and so therefore the one that is most liquid here we can see is our cash after cash the second most liquid is bank because that uh, money from the bank could easily be turned into cash and the one has the most difficult to turn into cash within the options is inventory so our answer is cash bank and inventory and you need to get all three in the correct order in order to get one mark part eight what term describes the reduction in the value of equipment and this term is depreciation if there's any reduction in the value of a non-current asset, we call this depreciation. One mark. Woo! We're doing well, man. Again, total. Everything right so far. How much money is owing to the firm at the end of the year? So in order to know, let's go and see where we can find this information. And this is found in here. Four our accounts receivable our account receivable sure is our debtors account and so therefore at the end of the year we have one thousand dollars being owed to the business from our accounts receivable our accounts receivable at year end one thousand dollars and part 10 what term is used to describe a, the business if it can pay its liabilities as and when due term is called that the business is solvent because the opposite when a business is insolvent that means they are unable to pay liabilities when they are due this is the end of question one
Ten parts. One question. Let's go.